Hi, my name is Alon Cornel and I play for Scenery. Thank you Antichrist Melzine for having us here. Uh, me representing you guys. Uh, first of all, we would like to say to the people of the Ukraine that we support you and we hope that this war will be uh, uh, over soon. Uh, stay safe and be and stay brave and we hope to finally come to your country and play for you someday soon and meet y'all. So stay safe. Uh, what is the meaning behind the band name? Well, there is none. Uh, I, I, we were we were we were kids and we didn't have like a better name because all of our options were shit. But um, so scenery was kind of catchy and uh, kind of caught our uh, our ears and and we thought it it'll be cool and we need to have meanings in our songs uh, rather than the name of the band that we we don't care. <laughs> but uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, a friend told me that. Uh, uh, this uh, Hebrew poet, legendary Hebrew poet Shaul Chalikovsky had uh, had uh, a sentence in one of his poems called, and it goes like, "Man is nothing but the image of his native landscape," and the landscape is a scenery, and we are are probably nothing but the image of our uh, of our of our landscape, like the 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 things that surround us growing up as a group, as individuals, so. Oh, when spelled like a scene, uh, <laughs> I guess that we are a landscape of all the bad things that happen to us. That's the main force behind the band, uh, and it kind of it kind of ties up to the whole concept and, of the band, and, and just seems cool. <laughs> he really nailed that one. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, what can you tell us a little bit about Black Bile? Well, Black Bile uh, is an album. That was a journey for us. Like uh, we really grew up into it. Our music style changed. Our music taste changed. Uh, we really evolved as, as as a group and as individuals. And like musically, it combines everything that we love about metal now. It's pretty modern, uh, but it still you can still feel the old school thrash uh, influences and old school death metal. And you have some black metal in it, uh, and and I think some some newer stuff like deathcore and metalcore in it. We kind of blended it all, all of our, uh, all of the bands that we love to listen to, all the things that we love about metal, to really have something that uh, that really reflects what we like. Uh, lyrically, this album uh, is very introspective, and it's about growing up, and it's about. Uh, evolving with our demons and using the force of all the bad things that happen to us to for, to make something new. Uh, the album is very melodic, uh, yet it's very aggressive, and we really try to keep it like high energy, uh, like like when you put the headphones down, you can listen to four people that ex that are exploding in a studio. That's what that's the feeling that we wanted to to pass through through our music. Can you talk about the lyrics on this release? Well, as I said, the lyrics are pretty introspective. Like it's an album about a black ball for us is is uh, is everything that is bad about us. Like the voices in our minds that keeps us depressed, that keeps us at our lowest, that keeps us from being the best we can. And and all the bad things that happen to us and every the memories that haunt us, our regrets and our doubts and using those things to elevate ourselves and have like create something new for us it's music for uh, everybody else it could be any anything from music to like uh, uh, art of some kind or a friendship or, or just a talk it can be anything but anything that you can create using like the things that you've been through and express who you are in it that's that's like using the black ball in you for us um, and the uh, lyrics are, are, are talking about that. They're talking about uh, people at their lowest, mostly. Like talks about depression and talks about doubts and regrets and and, uh, and our connection uh, with our friends and our and as a band and as a group. Uh, like we have a pretty uh, <laughs> uh, intense dynamic in a band that tries. Uh, that does everything to move forward and we keep pushing ourselves and each other to our limits so that's kind of intense and uh, and the songs are, are about this they're about us as individuals and our our strife and and 
about the the anti tribe, everyone that goes and support us and 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 relates to the black box concept. That's the anti tribe. Can you tell us a little bit about the album cover art? Well, the guy who did this is Travis Smith. Uh, he's a legend. I mean, for for me, as an art enthusiast uh, and, and, and someone who really likes art in general and in metal, uh, I love cover arts and I love booklets and I, ha I love collecting like the vinyls and the CDs and opening it up and see how many details and all the shirts. I, I love the, the art uh, perspectives about metal. And Travis Smith has done some <laughs> quite uh, a lot. Uh, all the Opeth and all, and then some death. He did, he did the Son of Perseverance and so many great cover arts. And we when we approached him with our concept about the album, I just say I just said like go nuts. I I mean he had the the angels hang from the sun, which is the bonus track of the album, and uh, and the rotten apple from the last track uh, called Holes and the uh, Sea of Black Bile. And I I think he kinda. He created a, a horror scene that is all like messed up and you can find like different elements in it. Every time you look, there's another detail hides in it uh, that is hiding in it. And he, he, he nailed, for me, he nailed like the chaos that is Black Bile. Like the, it's, it's a lot, it's a, there's a lot going on in the album. There's a lot going on on the art. And so I think you really nailed that one. Can you tell us about your cooperation with Exodus or Children Records? Well, Exodus or EXSR for short. <laughs> They've been great. I mean, we we when we started talking together, we talked about like working and working together, and and I, and I do mean we like working together like a team, because we're we're a small band, and they're not the biggest label out there, but. Uh, we formed a team together trying to elevate this album and the band as far as we can and I think that it's so awesome to work with these people that really want to see it blow up and, and up until now it's been like a very positive uh, experience uh, for us as artists we got uh, to be involved in uh, in everything and like the vinyl cover art like the whole thing how it gonna look in the end uh, we got into involved in it and it's it's incredible to be a part of the production like the physical production of this of the album as well so thank you xsr for having us uh, you guys are great and we're having a wonderful time in working with you uh do you think it's important to have a label deal well in nowadays you can do it without it we entered when we shop for labels we knew what we wanted to get uh, and we wanted to get people overseas that would wanna put the work in in making this album uh, as big as uh, as big as it can get and I think we we nailed it because the XSR like I said have been doing uh, an amazing job with it and they really support our cause and and we kind of formed a team that that works very well together so you can do it without a label deal you can do it yourself and and i i just think i, I think there's no rules in it like you can do whatever uh just shoot everywhere you can do it with a record deal and get to to a place and you can do it without and get to a, a different place that both ways work uh, if, if I need to pass something to musicians then I think as long as you work hard it doesn't matter what you do like if you if you keep hitting that wall something will crack so whether it's a label deal or not you gotta work you gotta put the time in uh, even if you got the record label deal <laughs> you gotta put the time in and you gotta do uh, as much as you can yourself so other people can do different stuff. You need to do every, like give your 200% and do it. 
Uh, what and when got you into music? Well, I was always into music. Since I was a kid, I couldn't fall asleep without music. I always loved music. I always wanted to be a musician, but uh, on the 22nd, I think, of May 2010, I've been to a Metallica concert in Israel. As you can see, I'm a big fan. Uh, and I saw the, the whole concert from the bleachers. And, but something like cracked inside of me, like, like a kid, I was like 14, and I looked at the stage where it opened with Crip and Dev, and it was so amazing and so intense, and I was like, that's what I wanna do. Nothing else, like that. I wanna, I wanna be in a band, we're gonna be four of us, there's gonna be four of us, and I want to explode on a stage as soon as the as the outro as the intro uh, stops. I want to explode on a stage for as many people as I can get to, and uh, as big a stage I can get. That was a life changing moment, for sure. I stand the whole. I think there is a there is a crack in the <laughs> on the floor and that stadium bleachers uh, where my jaw hit the floor. <laughs> Things are still marked. Because for the whole show, I was like, it's been amazing. Uh, and yeah, that's what got me into making music. Like, got me on my journey and thing. If you could change anything about the music industry, what it would be? Well, I think there's a lot of uh, competitiveness in the music scene, in the music industry. Uh, and I, I wish we could, like... Uh, trade ideas more like people would be more supportive of young and upcoming bands and, and share their knowledge with them because there's a lot of knowledge to be gained uh, on this journey and, and, and for me I think that you either pass the torch or you're put or you're put in and out there's no like in between so for me as a musician like the series is going to be 10 soon 10 years old and I try to pass on the knowledge that I've collected from these 10 years to the newer generation because uh, and I think in the music scene in Israel it, it really shows how the new upcoming bands are putting the work and are using the tips and are getting to a point that when we were at that like band age we couldn't have we didn't have those ideas like and that's amazing to see like the evolution of the music scene here in Israel uh, and see how bands evolve so that's the only thing that I would change about the music industry it's a it's a struggle to be a part of it and it should be because only the the best should be heard <laughs> I guess uh, have you had any epic fails during live performances yes many <laughs> uh, I can tell you that the first few, I don't know, 10 uh, shows Scenery had were total shit because we, we evolved into it and you, you, you've done a mistake once and then you did another mistake on the second time and on the third time you, you corrected those mistakes but you had another mistake and after a, a lot of more than a hundred shows just in Israel. We learned a lot. Uh, for me, uh, so so many times I uh, started blabbering in the microphone, kind of lost myself, got into talking and lost the point. <laughs> it happened so many times. Uh, I remember Sour jumping and falling on his ass. Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, confusing looks when something didn't sit right when we played <laughs> we had so many uh we tried to keep our shows very energetic and very like breathing because although we play with inner monitors we try to do the show as live as it can get for us so it's a live experience so we might fuck up but that's rock and roll you can't have it without the fuck ups so we we work hard on on like correcting the mistakes that we have but there's no option that there won't be any mistakes and that's the fun of it you gotta roll with the punches any new music and movies that have impressed you wow well 
New music. Well, the last Kendrick Lamar album has been amazing. Like it's a, such a personal journey, and his lyrics are amazing. And 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 for me as a as a lyricist, uh, it really inspired me. As a music writer, the last Decapitated album got me blown away because the riffs are just uh, <laughs> very iffy, if that makes sense. <laughs> we just saw them live. We played Rockstad uh, a few days ago, and we saw Decapitated playing live like the day before us, and that's been amazing. Their new music hits so hard. Uh, you have m m a lot of great music that's, that's coming out right now. Uh, the last Meshuga album was insane and the uh, new behemoth album uh, sounds like it's gonna be something cool uh they only released like three singles by now i don't know when this uh, this uh, interview will air by then there may be more but up until now it's been incredible and uh, and i love their whole like uh, visual their music videos and the whole symbolism and the uh, and the merch and everything so that's amazing and uh, it really like uh it, it, it it's in, it's inspiring to see that like that that band working uh movies i can't think of anything that really inspired me lately i'm more into i'm, I'm having a 90s face <laughs> so nothing new right now can you tell us a little bit about the thrash metal scene in Israel? Well, I can't tell you anything about the thrash metal scene in Israel because it's not existence. We have a metal scene. Like the, the scene here is relatively small, but uh, very united and very heavy, in my opinion. And I'm a big fan of it. We have a lot of cool bands here. Uh, cool bands that try to raise the bar and have, and like, uh, go kick the door in the European scene and the US scene. And try to break through it and we have like of course the orphan land or the biggest uh, israeli band to ever come out of here and you have and you have bands like shredhead and eternal struggle who who are our friends and they're doing impressive jobs and you have scardust and walkways and winter horde uh, that all have been right like this past week have been playing abroad and Eternal Stargust has just done a tour, and you have Structural that also done a tour, and Useless ID, who are a punk rock uh, giants here in Israel and in the world, actually, uh, they're on tour right now. So you have so many talents here, and you have the new bands emerging right now, like Her Last Sight, uh, and uh, and even uh, bands like Luvim, and you have old schools like uh, Lehavot, you have so many great talents here. That's incredible. Uh, a new cool band that is emerging right now, and I'm friends with their drummer, and they're doing incredible beatdown. Is called Silent Cut, uh, and their music. I've been to one of their rehearsals. I don't think they put anything out yet, but I've been to their rehearsals, and it sounds heavy and really fucking cool. So check that out, Silent Cut. Can you tell us a bit what are the future plans for Synergy? Well, going on tour, we are releasing we are releasing an album uh, September sixteenth uh, called Black Ball, like we talked about earlier, like I've talked about because there's no one here, uh, and and we we plan to go on tour with it. We want to play for as many people as we can, and and we're working on new material already. We have something cool in store. Uh, that I will, I think, will follow up uh, Black Power very soon, and, and that's it. Like we want to play as money as much as we can, and we want to write as much as we can, and and just do that. Like record some uh, as much music as we can, and go on tour and play uh, for you guys. We just came back from Romania. We have we now have a show in Tel Aviv, and we're looking forward to hit the road again. So thank you very much for having me, Antichrist Melzine. Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor, and everyone in the Ukraine, stay safe. Cheers, guys.